Hello UHS, we're back with Table Talk here with Mr. Withrow who's going to be telling us a few stories. I'll try to make most of them true. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I did have an a, a unusual uh, background, I guess. Uh, my dad was a pipeline foreman and he tra we traveled a lot, but he decided he wanted to settle down and uh, so we, he became a a worker in a steel mill in Mansfield, Ohio. That's where I was born. But when World War II broke out, <coughs> he was told that they needed the oil and they needed him back on the pipeline job. So that meant that he would leave, you know, he'd leave home in the early spring, uh, work all summer, come back in the fall. So until I was in the last part of my second grade, we traveled with him all the time. It starts school in Ohio, and then I'm going to two or three different schools, maybe four, in one in one year. In different places. And, yeah, yeah. Well, I could go. I went to school in Louisiana, Homo, Louisiana, Perry, Louisiana, uh, places in Texas. Okay, so like each time you came back, you went to a different school. Like you didn't go back to the same school you were at. Well, I I did come back to, to Mansfield and go to school, at in the winter time. Okay. <clears throat> in the winter, and then I'd start school there. When, but then we would go somewhere else for uh, a pipeline job. And whenever the pipeline headquarters would advance, then we'd move to another town. So that's why we had to go to th sometimes three, maybe four schools a year. So what's it like uh, having to move schools that much? Like, Well, I was only in the second grade when we finally settled down. My brother was in the sixth grade. And uh, being a boy, you always had to ha have a fight when you moved into a new school. Yeah, you know, you didn't have to win or lose to make any difference. You had to have a fight. And at my age, you didn't, couldn't hurt each other very much. Anyway, so we moved into my dad's hometown in southeast Kansas, which was quite a change from, my mother was from Ohio. Okay. In fact, when they were married, they moved, when they brought her back to Kansas, from St. Louis to the Kansas line was a gravel road. And from Kansas line on in to my hometown, a town called Chautauqua, Kansas, named after a Kiowa Indian chief. Uh, it was just dirt road. And people were still coming out with buggies and, and you know, horses and buggies going to town and stuff. But finally we settled down in, in uh, my dad's hometown in Kansas then. People used to always ask me, because I talked fast, because I was learning how to talk in Ohio. They said, sir and son, where are you from? I told them, Chautauqua, Kansas. Never heard anybody from Kansas, I mean, talk like that, because they talked at a little bit slower pace. So I heard you played football in high school. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting story there too. I went to a county high school. Each town had a little high school, but one in my hometown wasn't really that good. So I went to a county high school, so I roomed over. Yeah. And uh, uh, my dad didn't want me to play football because he knew a kid that got, broke his neck in, a, in this kind of recess type thing. and. I was killed and he didn't want me to play. But uh, I didn't, I wanted to, so, I, so I, in my junior year, he didn't know I was playing, my mom did, but my junior year, uh, the, the county paper came out with pictures, they always had two pictures of all the different teams, and they came out with uh, the, our, our team, and my picture on there made the, uh, made the first team, and he went to the barber shop where they passed on the news, now in the, in the uh, Beauty parlors they gossip, but in, in a barber shop they pass on the news. Mm -hmm. And so there, and uh, somebody says, "Hey, I saw Gene's picture, and made the football team at Aldermont." That's what. So he come stomping home, you know. But he always wanted you to finish anything you started. So he said, "Oh, so I want you to go ahead and finish." But he said, "If you play again next year, it's going to be against my wishes." Well, I, you know, I was a teenager once, and if it was against his wishes, that was okay with me. He didn't say I couldn't <laughs> play, so I went ahead and played. And uh, senior, senior year, he came home from the pipeline job, went to the barber shop the same week, pictures came out again. And the guys told him I saw my picture again. So he came home and says, well, I guess I have to let you play. Well, I played four years. And uh, he only saw two, he saw two uh, high school games is all. And in college, I played at Pittsburgh State. And he, he only saw one spring training game is all he ever saw there. And he wasn't too up on sports. He, we, uh, Pittsburgh was had uh, red and gold. We had a red team and a gold team for the spring training practice. Yeah. And uh, so I asked him after the game, how'd you like the game? 
says, oh, it's okay, but somebody kept hollering, come on, Big Red, come on, Big Red. You think Big Red was the only player out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I gently explained it to him, kind of embarrassed him. So then I went, but uh, at Pittsburgh State, uh, I, uh, well, I, I started, they had, back then they had a JV team also. And so I started, I started the JV team as a freshman. It was freshmen, sophomore, and juniors who weren't uh, playing on varsity. Well, I was, I made the, uh, tra the uh, they, they suited up four, four teams for the home games. So I made that my freshman year. Then my sophomore year, I made the traveling squad, which was three teams. I made the traveling squad there. And I, I had been dating my wife uh, for, for five years, starting in high school. And we, um, I uh, thought we could, we want to get married uh, after I graduated. So, so we got engaged during the summer of, before my sophomore year. And we decided we could live on her salary. She was a telephone operator. So to go ahead and we went and got married you know, on Easter Sunday. And believe it or not, on Easter Sunday of that year, it was April the 1st. So it was, we were married on April Fool's Day. Anyway, so. Uh, that could have been a very horrible April Fool's Day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it lasted 61 years, bless her heart, she's gone now, but 61 years. And uh, so we uh, uh, probably could live on her salary as a telephone operator, and I keep on playing for four years. Found out we couldn't live on her salary, so I had to drop out and come back six years later. The biggest regret I've got about that, though, if I had stayed, it would have been my senior year we won the Division II National Championship. And I had to watch that on television. You know, it could have been there. Oh, agony, I mean, agony. And it took me years. I'm, in fact, I'm almost over it now. <laughs> <laughs> took me years to get, to get over it, though. But, that ex but the experience I got in industry, I was a draftsman, was more valuable than bragging rights yeah. about a game, you know. Yeah. It's just, uh, you still keep thinking, what if, but anyway, so. We were married. We we uh, moved a uh, total of 18 times. I had 11 different jobs. Now sometimes we moved, like Wichita, we moved three times and to get in a better place. Mm -hmm. And then another place we lived, we moved twice, and we twice in Union. But I, every job I had was going to be my very last job. Mm -hmm. And Turned out it was preparation for the next job that came up. So coming out of that, do you have any advice for young people like us? Just, uh, I think, follow your heart. Don't be afraid to take the chances. Don't be afraid to, to move and, and you know, do what you got to do. Where I grew up, there wasn't any job, so you had to move to get a job. But uh, don't be afraid to take a chance and, and go after what you really, what really what you want to do. So how and why did you end up subbing? Well, I've, after going to change my major five times in college, I finally decided I still wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I got, went back to Pittsburgh State and got my degree in, in education, in industrial ed, industrial arts. And uh, I taught, I started out teaching at Lynn Tech, first job, and they were having financial problems. We were getting paid once every six weeks instead of once every month. So I went back to my old high school in Kansas and I taught there for a couple of years. Then I went up to Manhattan, Kansas at a vocational school. Taught two more years up there. I wanted to get back in the industry again. So I came back to work for McDonnell Douglas. And uh, I was there three days when the Department of Defense canceled the whole project, the whole program. My furniture wasn't even here yet. We were living in St. Charles and they didn't have my furniture yet. So I, I went out and got my Kansas tags out of the trash, and then I, then I went back and threw them back again twice, and I decided I was going to stay in Missouri. And I got a job at Binkley and Warrington for the, the, the last day at McDonald at McDonald's, and somehow my a friend who I taught drafting in Kansas, we used to go to meetings together, was a dean of Lee Central. Somehow he found out that I was here, so he had me teaching drafting at night for East Central, and then, he, I got a f then went to work full time for East Central. And I wound up as the director of adult education. I was there nine years, had that call to go back in industry again. Mm -hmm. So I went into industrial sales 
for 25 years and just loved it. But I was traveling again. Maybe that's where it came from. I'd be gone two or three nights a week, but at home every weekend and about a week every so often, and I, I, I loved it. I wondered how it would be to go 20 years to the same place and see the same people, but it made friends, you know, and people you would look forward to seeing, most of them. <laughs> so uh, would you say that the experience of moving from place to place was good, a good experience for you in your life, or do you think it was more like uh, stressful or uh, draining? I think it was really turned out to be a good experience because you, you learn how to meet new people and how to, you know, how to, to make friends. And uh, I think, I, I don't remember a lot of trauma. Only thing I remember of trauma, traumatic little bit of moving was when I was in second grade, when I moved from home of Louisiana to another little town, the teacher told me she was glad I was leaving. Oh, yeah. I think we've all had that teacher. Oh, yeah. Most no. definitely. Here, as far as subs go, most of them we don't remember, but you've been here all yeah. four years. And we always have loved your jokes and riddles. And well, I appreciate that. Seeing you there if you're in our classroom. I, I enjoy it. And of course, I enjoy telling jokes. <laughs> Some of you have heard the same ones over and over again. <laughs> Do you want to go ahead and say a couple of them for the well, audience? Yeah, one of my, a couple of my favorite ones. One of them is about the people that wouldn't let. I haven't heard that. Okay, this uh, a guy drove into his farmer's so yard. He wanted to get permission to hunt. And looked over and saw this pig that had wooden legs and he started laughing. He said, don't, don't laugh at my pig. He said, one day, uh, our, one night our curtains caught on fire. He broke through the fence and hit his snout against the wall and woke us up and saved our lives. He said, one day I turned the tractor over and out of the field, he came out and dug me out, saved my life. He said, don't laugh at my pig. Okay, I'm sorry, but uh, why has he got a wooden leg? Man, when you got a pig like that, you don't eat him all at once. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, then the one I like is the three-legged chicken. Guy was driving down the country road and 40 miles an hour and looked down here was this chicken running right beside him. He kicked up 45 and the chicken was still right there running with him. Kicked up to 50 and the chicken ran across him, crossed him into the yard started picking corn. He stopped and backed up and pulled in. Farmer was sitting on the front porch. He said, that's your chicken? He says, yeah. Kind of different, isn't he? Yep, he's got three legs. How come he's got three legs? Well, I like chicken legs, mom likes chicken legs, and our son likes chicken legs, so we were bred him with three legs. Really? How's he taste? Can't really tell you. Ain't been able to catch one yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a couple of my favorites, anyway. Mm -hmm. Of course, but I, I, the reason I, I, I sub is because I, I, I just enjoy high school kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's wrong with me. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, good. we enjoy your company. Yeah. Well, thank you. You guys, are, you, got, you got so much energy and you're fun and a little bit ornery like I used to was. Uh, I might have mentioned when I was in high school, we roomed over. In the last two years, I don't know how much time you want me to use, but the last two years, there were seven boys upstairs in a house by unsupervised with a widow lady who owned the house down below. And we had a lot of fun. One of, one of my jobs was to go down the steps and look in and see her bedroom. And if she had a good ear and a bad ear. And if the good ear was up, we had to be quiet. If the bad ear was up, we could make all the noise we wanted. <laughs> so my job was to go down and check what's here, see what ear was up. <laughs> and every once in a while she was going to get mad and going to throw us out for something. And then my other job was to go down and talk to her. And we played her old Victrola, you know. and kind of soothe things out a little bit, and finally she'd say, okay, I'm gonna let you stay. <laughs> but we had a lot of, at the time we got out of high school, we were all calmed down, because we had already, a little town, um, the, the town was only about 400 people, the high school was 550. And that was a big high school in the, back there in that county. Yeah. yeah. But it was, uh, and we did a lot of only things, some I can't mention, but, <laughs> We had, had a lot of, I, I brought in cupcakes one time. Tell, tell me when you want me to stop. I brought in some cupcakes on a Sunday night, put them in the cupboard, and uh, the kid came in after practice the next, that night, Monday, and they were all gone. 
So I got with one of the girls in town and we made fudge. And for every piece of fudge we, we had figured we put in one and a half pieces of X-Lex. Mm -hmm. And this was, the town was not modern, the school was, the town was not modern, we had outhouses. So I put that up in the cupboard, came back in the next evening and the most was gone. This story is going to end great. Oh well, yes, this is going to be amazing. So, so I, uh, I didn't, nobody said a word, so I came back in the next Sunday night with a whole bunch of cake, cupcakes with white icing. Nobody would take a one. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't, nobody said anything, but nobody would take, would take anything. So we, we had several interesting times like that. Yeah. That sounds uh, yeah. awesome. Thank you for being on the show. I think we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Yeah, I'm hoping to talk too much. but. Oh, oh no, no, you were no, fine. Just fine. Great stories. And I enjoy you guys. I really do. And I appreciate you. Just I'm glad that uh, I'm able to be here. Yeah, Thank you for being on the show. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for asking me. Appreciate it. Anytime.